from humble military uh, origins and also backgrounds as well to 67 years of uh, combined production. The car we are reviewing today has evolved and stood the test of time. However, the all new generation has spurred different reactions in the automotive world and even among non-car people because this car is totally different from its ancestors. Because Conversations is that channel that is going to guarantee you an alluring motor vehicle experience, we are going to be giving you an up close and candid review of the new Defender 130. And on this review, we are going to tell you when did the Defender nameplate come to be, what is the history behind it, and how different is this new Defender from its ancestors. Also, what's the difference between the 90, 110 and 130. I'll be your host, the Canvasologist Eric Okabi, Eric with a CK. Do follow me at a personal level on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok as well. And also, we value your sentiments at Conversations. You guys have really asked that we bring this car on set. And today, it has been made possible by Motohub Kiambu Road. So, big thank you to Motohub for availing this hard-to-get unit. And now, let's get up close and candid with the new Defender 130. Uh, before we talk about the new Defender and why it has elicited very different reactions, both good and bad, in uh, the world at large, let's talk about this nameplate over here, Defender. So most of us talk about the Defender, but not many know the origin of uh, the badge Defender. Well, uh, I have told you that uh, the, land, the Land Rover was in production for around a combined 67 years, up to around 20, 2016 thereabout. And uh, the first Land Rover rolled out of the production line uh, 72 years from the time <laughs> this video was filmed uh, and it had the registration plate HUE 166. Well, uh, a few years down the line, probably around 30 years down the line, there was another uh, vehicle that Land Rover had developed and that vehicle was named the Land Rover Discovery. Well, it was to be specific, it was the Discovery one. Before the Defender nameplate, these Land Rovers, the utilitarian Land Rovers used to be called uh, Land Rover Series 1, Series 2, Series 3. They were called the Series Land Rovers. But around 1990, uh, Land Rover saw the need to create a borderline between the civilian comfort oriented from the utilitarian off-road oriented models and so they decided to give the off-road oriented model a name and that name was the defender remember i've told you that uh, this car originates from humble military backgrounds and uh, they were they were all inspired actually land rover uh, with, the, with the series Land Rovers, uh, Toyota with the Land Cruisers, and Mercedes-Benz with the G-Wagon or the G-Class were all, um, you know, motivated or inspired by the military. Well, they were all answers to one vehicle that the U.S. Army used, or the U.S. military, and that was called the Willys Jeep. So the Brits had to create the Land Rover to have a vehicle that was as hardy and as capable as the Willys Jeep. The Japanese also saw the Willys Jeep and they had to build a vehicle that would be capable, as capable as the Willys Jeep, and that was the Land Cruiser. Mercedes, on the other hand, they had the G wagon. Sawa, sawa. So at least we know these great vehicles and all military inspired vehicles have proven to be hardy and to be very, very, very great. So the Defender uh, nameplate was on the Land Rovers from around 1990. So it has not been around for a very long time, but it's very, very, very significant because it was the borderline between the off-road oriented models in uh, Land Rovers lineup and the comfort oriented models like the Land Rover Discovery. Tasa, tuko pamoja. So let's talk about the Prima Feishi. Now this vehicle is very different from its ancestors. The ancestors were known to be boxy, to be rugged and uh, 
Remember what happened with the Discovery series. Now, the Discovery series were more of a balance between utility and a bit of comfort. But from Discovery 4, Discovery 3 actually, they turned to be more and more luxurious. Same with the Defender. So the Defender has been known around the world as one of the toughest utility vehicles of 4x4s uh, to crawl the surface of the earth alongside land cruisers and jeeps uh, and also g-wagons so but when this particular uh, evolution or this particular generation of the defender was unveiled there were so many diehard four by four lovers who were against this vehicle because it had shifted from being a utilitarian 4x4 to a luxury 4x4 on a Land Rover's uh, lineup. And uh, now this also inspired the production of a new vehicle in the global market today. Another one that has elicited so many different reactions and that is the Ineos Grenadier. I hope we are going to have that car on conversations soon. But today we keep it up close and candid with the Defender. It has carried nothing from the previous generation apart from these checker plates that are they are not actually checker plates they are they have only been inspired from the previous defender to make it to give it a defender look the face is totally different it's drenched in technology it looks more elegant it's not as hardy as the ancestors it has a lot of aluminium but it's made of aluminium and the significant differences between this and the previous generation defender the most significant one is that this particular one it does not feature a body on frame design it has a unibody and it has a yeah it has an aluminium unibody so it's not as tough as the ancestors but it's a bit more luxury oriented we are going to talk about the off-road tech that is in this vehicle uh, tech that even the manufacturers or rather the engineers who put together the previous generation Defender would never have imagined that the Defender would carry. And the basis of this review will be, will that kind of tech hold up to the kind of uh, harsh terrain that the previous generation Defender would adapt to? Let's check what powers up the all new Defender. Powering up this specific 130 is a 2-litre 4-cylinder uh, Ingenium engine from Jaguar Land Rover. A very new generation of uh, engines um, in that lineup. And this specific one is called the AJ200D. It came in two variants and this specific variant uh, is known to produce around 197 horsepower. That can be rounded off to around 200 horsepower and an impressive 430 newton meters of torque. Now, this particular one, another significant difference between this and the previous Defender is that this one has permanent four-wheel drive. Yes, so this one, is, it's not optional. You have four-wheel drive at all, uh, you know, at all time. And that, and the transfer case on this one, it's actually a two-speed transfer case and also an 8-speed ZF automatic transmission. Yeah, so you do not get the old school manual. However, there is something that you get that is very old school on this Defender. Now, if you look, <laughs> if you look inside the trunk, you will see a huge old school steering system. And I think that is, that is just, uh, it's something that we did not expect to find in the Defender, but it's, it's, it's pretty impressive. Eh? So, what, how does this engine shine? It mostly shines in terms of uh, fuel economy because this can give all the way up to 13, 14 kilometers to the liter. And uh, it has so much tech. Part of that tech is idling stop. Again, I told you that the makers of the previous generation Defender may, may have never thought that you would have this technology in a vehicle christened a Defender. Because my opinion on this vehicle would be the Defender is just aesthetic. It is not the real Defender. We all know the real Defender. Now let's talk about the suspension on the new Defender because that is also another point of interest because uh, we know Range Rover, Land Rover for being, or Land Rover Range Rover for, for comfort. Well, and they have been known to use air suspension. Well, on the new Defender, now this particular one sits on uh, size 20 wheels and it comes with alloys as standard and airbag suspension or air suspension that is active and adaptive at the same time. However, 
uh, if you're looking for a defender that might not come with the problems that air suspension brings to these vehicles or because Land Rovers are notorious for having finicky air suspension, although they are, part, they, they are probably the most comfortable. Well, you can have one spec for you and it will come with coil springs. Yeah. So now let's talk about the wheelbase because this forms the basis of the nomenclature of the new Defender. Well, when we are talking about the new Defender, we would be talking about the 90, 110 and 130. And uh, before we talk about this one, let's, let's, let's take a walk down memory lane. Now the other Defenders also had the nomenclature 90, uh, 110, 130 and 147. Now in the previous generation Defenders, the, the 90 was the short wheelbase one. The 110 came in a station wagon configuration that was either a either station wagon or uh, a troop carrier or even uh, a pickup. Yes, actually we knew the police Land Rovers to be pickups back then. And we told you Land Rover ni Magariza Karao. Then there was also the 130. The 130 uh, as opposed to what we have on, in this generation was a double cabin uh, version of the 110. So it was longer than the 110 and it was, it had, it, it was more of a, a ute. Yes, a dual cab ute. So it was, it, it's probably the best looking Land Rover uh, in, in its lineage because it looked mighty and it was also big and uh, it had some serious capabilities. There was one very rare one that probably most people have never had. It was called the 147. It was a limo version of the 110. Now let's fast forward to this particular generation. The 90 in this generation, okay. A summary first, we do not have a pickup on this generation and we do not have a dual cab as well. So the 90 was the short wheelbase version of this one. I hope Mugo will put that on the screen. The 110 is basically this one. And now the 130 is again basically this one only 14 inches longer. Yeah, so it's, it's basically nothing much changes on this particular vehicle. And that is why I feel it has lost some DNA from the previous generation uh, Defender. So we do not have so many body configurations. We only have the SUV and the compact short wheelbase three door version of this. So we, I, I would have loved to conceptualize a dual cab ute of this. I, I don't know if the Australians have started chopping these ones into uh, dual cab utes, uh, but it would be a tough job because of the technology in this dual cab. Let's uh, check out the rear and see how practical this vehicle is. The rear is very different from what you would see in the conventional Defender, but it's, uh, it's very futuristic uh, and carries some retro design aspects like this tail-mounted uh, spare tire. It still gives it that rugged look. But how practical is the new Defender? Well, it might be very technologically advanced, but we still have the traditional <laughs> tailgate, it's not a split tailgate uh, and just like the G-Wagon, it's, it's very simple but it's designed in a fancy way. Probably the best definition of simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. It has a lot of boot space to haul your luggage uh, or even your camping gear if you're taking this car off-road. And you also get to have some more space down here for your tools and probably uh, a few things that you might use while you're taking this car for an adventure. So basically it's a very, you know, it, it looks comfortable and very, very boxy. The, maybe that's the most ironical thing about this vehicle. While other uh, manufacturers, or when, when they are going round on the Range Rover, they are trying to keep it boxy on the Land Rover Defender. However, it doesn't look as rugged as the previous generation uh, Land Rover, and I must say that the previous generation uh, Land Rover, the heritage was just epic. The defenders, you know, they were just, they were known to go anywhere. They were known to be, well, they were reliable. We can say they were reliable. People might argue that, but they were, a bit, okay, they were known for some oil leaks here and there, but they would, at least they would go anywhere and they would stand a lot of harsh treatment. Unlike what we have here as the new defender. 
Uh, let's take a look at the interior and see what we have because this vehicle is drenched in tech. Nothing like the ancestors completely nothing this is a whole new vehicle compared to what we know as the legendary defender will this one be really legendary we'll answer that question when once you're doing our our ritual the review with the boys Inside the new Defender doesn't feel much of a difference between this and the Range Rover. Well, they are pretty much the same, even when it comes to the ergonomics. Only that this one, the view is a bit more. You know, it's 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 not as wide as that of a Range Rover. However, uh, let's talk about the infotainment and the tech that this vehicle has. The well. Most of the features are what you would find in the Range Rover. In fact, there is nothing very new on this one. Uh, but uh, for the people who are buying the Defender, the Defender is known to be a formidable off-road vehicle. And this one has been, okay, it's a, it's a bit different because everything, all four-wheel drive applications are, you know, electronic. Now, it lacks, uh, unlike the G-Wagon that has three differentials, front, center, and rear, the Defender does not have a front diff, and it relies on ABS to serve the same function that the diff lock would be. And how it does it is that uh, ABS breaks or holds the, wheels that, the wheel that is at spin and sends power to the wheel that is at grip. However, the center and the rear diffs, well, in vehicles such as the Toyota Prad, the Land Cruisers and the G-Wagons, you can actually lock them manually. But in the new Defender, you cannot lock them manually. They just lock up electronically, they engage and disengage. As you're driving the car, which is, you know, very, very, very and four-wheel drive, because the four-wheel drive system on the new Defender relies entirely on computers. You have a multi-terrain select system. Uh, what can you select from here? You have, uh, you have Eco, uh, you have, then you have Comfort, you have uh, gravel and snow, you have mud and rats, you have sand, you have rock crawl, you have wedding. Now, wed is, uh, is probably the newest feature on this one and you can also configure your, you know, the four-wheel drive system. You can personalize it. Uh, so th those are some of the, and, and by the way, this I must say, the user interface on the this infotainment system is actually quite complex. So you need to sit in the car and learn how it works. Also, this vehicle has air suspension. You can raise clearance or uh, lower it. Yeah, so you can adjust the right height, just like in the, you know, the, the, the Range Rover brother. Actually, there is so much that is Range Rover on, on this vehicle. Let's, let's explore the infotainment a little bit more. And if we go to home menu some interesting features you well, climate control these are kawaida uh valet mode uh that's that's new on the defender also you have low low traction launch mostly these will engage when you're in slippery conditions uh the other thing voice command vehicle dimensions uh nothing so new uh, and also media uh, the person who would be buying this vehicle might not really interact a hundred percent with this interface because it's a bit you know they're a bit complex but the cameras are quite interesting so in on-road mode you you have you can click on these cameras over here and they'll give you a virtual image of the vehicle like on this one you can see uh, two left doors are open you can also take a look at the rear and these these are very fancy and very advanced feature on the defender now the other one let's switch to off-road mode now when it comes to off-road mode uh, off-roaders will tell you that sometimes when you're going through very harsh terrain you will need the services of a spotter and these front cameras do that for you yeah so you have you do not you you, ca you have the view from you know under there so you can be able to see the kind of terrain that you you know you're working on so it's, it's a very interesting infotainment system, but it definitely needs you to be, you know, to first of all study it. Uh, 
the sound system you have just like in the range rover you have a meridian surround sound system which is very good quality sound the dashboard is refined but in a rugged way you still have this handle over here but i doubt you you need it in a land cruiser 79 or in the older defender but in this i doubt you're going to need that these are some of the retro cues that have been carried forward on the new defender now i'll take this car for a spin with the boys so that they also get to give us their verdict on the new defender ah was it yes now you're seated in a 23 million kenya shilling machine <laughs> yes and it's a vehicle that has had a lot of talk. In fact, when they were launching it, it's it's arguably one of the most talked about vehicles. Yes. I let me start this as the prophet of doom. Uh -huh. I had always looked forward to driving this vehicle. Yes. But to be honest, mm -hmm. it just feels like a restyled Range Rover. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Away from the few design cues up and up early, which makes it look a little bit rugged but for me this is a luxury car i feel more of being in a luxury car than being in a serious off-road machine like point home in a range in a minimal in a minimal way yeah it's basically a range rover how does it feel to drive because that is what i'm more interested in it feels now the, the other the other defender would be more of a right. difficult car to drive on the road because it was meant for no not difficult yes more more mm. engaging <laughs> yes more driver centric <laughs> yes uh, yes not difficult but this one is more relaxed and and and, and, and composed kind of driving how does it feel uh not bad yeah. it feels range roverish yes yeah okay. i i still do not get the hype behind this vehicle yeah. But one thing I love about it being here at the front, away from having memory seats, Pandayote, I think here they thought about, you know, Range Rover, Land Rover are kings of luxury. So when they do their setups, you definitely get the best of the best. Eh? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to talk about it, but the amount of chargers before I go to this <laughs> gentleman sitting at the rear. So Leo took on a Kevo from Motorhub. Uh, uh, Kevo Yuko, yes, I represent. Yes. Nambugwa. Uh, yes. So who do we start with? Bugwa, it wasn't a way. Give us. It wasn't a way. Yes. Hey, man, there were some charges. I did COVID, man. There are so many charging ports in this car. I don't know what, for what reason, but I, I feel they are, they are useful for me. Yes. One, you have one on the seat. Behind the driver, behind the passenger, you have another one here. Uh, come the Kawaida place. Yes. You have the 12 volt. Kama Kawaida. Uko na ingine, uko na ingine, uko na ingine, uko na space. You have a uh, USB and you have a 12 volt and also you have a 12, 230 volt up on Numa Pier. Yes. I mean, there are too many. I can't even count them. Mm. But for me, the feeling here behind Kama yeah. Kawaida, luxury, luxury, luxury. You have now this one is where you get the four zone. Yeah? Uh -huh. You get the four zone. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> it's five. It's five. It's five. It's five. It's five. It's five. You're carrying a dog or something, you're a pet. Yes. You still receive, and you can control the fan. Now, <laughs> now, Defender lost it. <laughs> defender lost it. A hundred percent. Because the defenders, my remember a climate, I could have. I could have. You could have. You could have. Remember those? Not even right. Divisha. They had those two. Oh, at the front. At the front. So, so you'd open, open them. Up, air will come to yes. the front. It will blow through. Kevo, yes. talk to us, my brother. <laughs> how, how, how do you feel? How do you feel? What, what do you think? Yeah. Well, I think uh, it's an amazing experience yes. considering uh, the defender, they are not trying to be much ragged. They're trying to enter the luxury uh, class. Yes. Because you can see this one, 30. The interior is really nice and pretty. Leather interior, Kama Kawaida. Mm. And as uh, Erika Besema, mm. this is a uh, low budget range rover. Ah. Like, not really low not budget. Really, <laughs> not 
This, this is 23, even though we But no, that, that was a 2018, right? That was a 2018. So if we get a 2021, yeah. it will cost almost, almost the same the as same. this one. Yeah. Interesting. Because about the interior and the dashboard, they try to copy Range Rover and everything. It is, it's just it's a, a Range Rover. Rover. It's a Range Rover. It's a minimal kind of style, but it's Range Rover. And one thing I don't, I, I don't understand with Land Rover is why are they trying to make all their cars look the same? I wish they would have just kept the Defender Defender. As the rugged. rugged. You see, there is a reason why the Land Cruiser 79 is still in production. Correct. I don't think, for me, I feel that the old models Defenders, now you have to customize it yourself. I don't think they are... Are they new? Is it still in production? Is no, no, no. The, the new Defender is in no fact, longer. they are now hotcakes. Yes. yes. You cannot afford them. If you get one that has But I believe there are people who are customizing them Definitely, look good. definitely. Another That's thing... Mm. They, another but but they looked about, good. Yeah, they look good. Another disadvantage <laughs> of this one, yeah. you remember you, you can be saying that you cannot customize this one. You will cut our happy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you start cutting this one, yeah, you are the, done. The technology will not allow you. No. Before we do our team score, Kabi, eh? And before we, 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 we do a, a summary of what we think about this car, yes. can we confirm the speeds? Uh, what, what, what are the figures? You told us around 200 horsepower? To, to the, uh, 200 there, about actually slightly below 200. Uh, I don't know, 197 to be specific. Mm -hmm. 430 newton meters of torque. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a disadvantage in one way. Yes. Because that's, the torque figures are around the same as those of a Toyota Hilux. Ah? Uh, yes. You know, G-Wagon, you were talking, but anyway, it's it's decent amounts of talk. Yes. Uh, the G-Wagon was pulling around 500 and some, no, 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 there was... The G-Wagon, the horsepower was... was seven, no, no, not the horsepower, no, the talk. 500. Around 500 Newton meters. No, the Newton meters was 700 Newton meters. No, it was 800. It was 800. 800, 800. 800, book. G-Wagon. 800 newton meters of talk and 500 compared to 500 something was 500 how much was the g wagon going for 19 million still for a motor hub yes, it, was it was going for 19 million yes then okay. it has more off-road grade tell me convince and, and, me why and, you should buy this okay <laughs> I, I i get where you're coming from <laughs> for off-road guys i think if you buy this car to go for off-road i think the g wagon will make more sense that's my thoughts for me, those are, those are my thoughts. So, but if you like the Land Rover badge, just know you're buying a Range different Rover. styled Range Rover. <laughs> Range Rover. Right? Can so we do go? the thing? Yep. Yep. Yeah, relax, relax. Are you in sport mode? Are you in sport mode? So, Okabi? Okabi? You how do you, do you have sport mode on this? Oh, it has yes. for shifting. Yes. Okay. You ready? I'm very ready. I was One, born ready. Two, three, go. Ah, the load is <laughs> <laughs> don't disappoint me. Reggie, don't disappoint me. Uh, this one is in miles me. 60. Ah, yes. 10, Ten seconds. seconds. Ah. I think, no, I think you can do better. <laughs> no, but where it's it's capped as at, 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 at 10 seconds, yeah. But still, yeah. I'm going launch I think we'll sleep by 20 no, seconds. No, it launched very well. Let's confirm. <laughs> Let's confirm. We have the I car. Think we can hit a high nine. A high nine. A high nine. A nine Actually, we achieved ten point five. So. Uh, let's, let's try. Do, let's, let's try. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Aya, do we? Are you guys ready for yes, take two. the launch? Take two. Let's see which one we are going take to talk. keep. Uh huh. Uh, me, I'm ready. I am ready. Wakabi, ready? Yep. One, two, three, go. Ah, that was a that good was launch. A good <laughs> <laughs> that was a good launch. Sixty nine. <laughs> <laughs>. Right. Uh, oh, and tell guys by the way, the reason why we are doing zero to sixty yes. today is because this is in miles. Yes, it's it's an ex UK unit. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they do it the, the miles away. Okay. That's Shanghai. We are doing zero. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
Interesting car, interesting car. So my verdict would be yes if we start from there because before, before, we can go, before you give a verdict, once and a kevo. Summary, give us your team score and what you think. We summarize this thing. Uh, oh well, I think uh, from my end, yes. I can give this car uh, eight point and eight point eight mm -hmm. because it lacked the, the nine and the ten because one uh, for twenty three million yes. the rear seats are they're not electric. I uh, don't get the wireless charging point up on Bele. Uh, the dashboard up, I have a feeling. Only potesa, only lack which is a quick up on Bele. So not like the display. It's too, up, much. It's yeah. too minimal display. Yes. Like you have a lot of space on the end. No mauna wame engrave the word defend up on the left. Yeah. So I think I'd give it an eight over ten. Nice one. Bugwa. For me, I love an eight, but no, a seven point five. You see, yes. this car has yeah. disappointed me so much. The fact that we were we've we've stayed, I think I should have taken a video of us looking yes. for the diff lock. Yeah. <laughs> Yet uh, there's nothing like that. Uh, it's really disappointed me. I I I, I oh, okay to Kianza show. Uh, I was like a person buying Nissan Serena. You're not trying convincing people not to buy a Nissan Serena. Yes. If I had the 23 million by then, I wouldn't get Nambia. But now I've learned so much. Hey, many angusha bana, many angusha. But in terms of uh, the look still it looks still good the aesthetics and everything and also the bit luxury up a new for me it's a 7.5 it's, it's many many disappoint kidogo <laughs> CK, can i finish this work i know you finish. have heated steering wheels yes and it's, so you are enjoying yourself i'm not enjoying myself it's very uncomfortable no but <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's heated i prefer <laughs> the old school way yeah so now uh for me for me I want to speak as a guy who is buying this car coming from um, from the territory of owning the former defenders. I'm a guy who's going after tackling serious off-road terrains. I'm a guy who is looking for the ruggedness. I'm the guy who wants to make an adventure out of this car. And if that is the parameter that I'm considering while buying this car, then I'll give this car a solid 6.5 <laughs> I, um, because i feel i feel yes it can take me to some of those places but not in a confident and reliable package i think the electronics for me uh the diff lockers are electronically done for me that is a no no i would rather have manual lockers that i know i've locked and i'm sure about what i'm doing so on the off-road uh, heritage that the defender has i think this defender loses a hundred percent it is more of a Range Rover with a 4x4 capability, yes. you understand? And as you said, I know for a fact, people who are going to buy this car for 23 million will not take it off-road. Yeah. Now, that now that's where. So, it, so basically, if you're looking for the badge defender, but in a Range Rover, then this is your car. For me, that is my summary. My so my 6.5 stance as an off-road guy. But if I change and become a luxury guy, it I gets a 9. <laughs> <laughs> no. I take it off. My, my, my take on this, actually today the, the team score is will be out of 40. Yes. Because we have a guest. Yeah. Now, mine, uh, mine is very sentimental. Yes. Uh, I feel the on this, the badge defender has been abused. Mm -hmm. Because this is nowhere near a defender. This is nothing. Okay, Land Rover have very good off-road tech, even if it's elect electronic. But you see, you cannot take this car where the Defender would go. You cannot give the cops this this one. This one. True. You see. Uh, so my team call on, my team's call on this. Well, I feel that this they would have called it a mini. Like like an Evoke or something because it's probably more or less that. Oh, I've called it a Range Rover four by four. Or Range Rover four. <laughs> 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 you know, for the, for the <laughs> uh, because you see now, uh, where does this vehicle lose? Number one, there was too much hype on this vehicle. Uh, number two is it's basically there's there's nothing we can say new. You know, when they were hyping this vehicle, there was this is a new Defender. You got new stuff. This is basically stuff you will find on. The disco. A Range Rover or the even disco. a Disco something. Four or five. Four or five, yes. yeah? So it, it lacks the Defender aspect of it. Remember the military had Defender history. I, I even don't think the military in the UK would use this car. No, this one is more of a luxury it's, it's, it's a luxury unit. So um, I think this is what will give the Ineos great sales. Yes. And without giving it 
a score as a defender, yes. I will give it a six out of ten. Hey, hey. so it has scored. Uh, what was your score, Bugo? Mine was a seven point five. Hey, now it is becoming tricky. <laughs> Delete that. Age. It is becoming <laughs> tricky. So seven point five. Yes. Twenty-eight out of 40. out of forty. Mm. Okay. But, but in terms of luxury, technology. in terms of luxury, it's good. It's if, good in if, terms of if luxury. The technology was this in a range. If it was a Range Rover, we could have. Um, so, so for me, I think my take home, Okabe, as you go to value for money, would be if you're looking for a luxury car, okay? And okay, not a full luxury car, but a slightly moderate luxury car that has capabilities of a slightly capable off-road, then this is the car, okay? So you're just buying the badge defender, but with a lot of luxury setup. Exactly. You understand? But if you're looking for a defender, the old one, <laughs> Let's restore them. <laughs> Try value for money. Value for money. <laughs> <laughs>